and I'm really excited to have Virginia McNamara uh, here to discuss Citizen and the platform and, and, and our relationship that we're launching with them uh, that is going to be a specific deliverable call to action today, right? Yeah, if, if it's it's the, the worldwide map, it's Citizen, it's Rare X, it's all these things work in conjunction together. So uh, I've said enough, uh, Virginia, I'll let you take it away. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and then we'll start. And I'll let you, you're going to do the questions at the end. Is that the, the plan or do you want to interrupt yes. me? Yeah. I, I, any questions that come, uh, we'll just kind of uh, try to answer as many as we can at the end. Okay, great. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Virginia McNamer and I'm also a rare mom. So my son has Syngap, which is also a neuro rare disease. Um, and we launched Citizen for our rare disease community um, three years ago now, and we now have about 200 uh, patients in our database. And we chose Citizen um, because we had that sense of urgency and we needed a strong, we understood that we needed um, a lot of data in a short time. And we, ne we knew we had to build a strong natural history study for a rare disease um, but we didn't have time to set up a, a, a traditional uh, natural history study because it takes years. Um, and we also wanted something that was easy for our community and that would have a really strong impact, but also give back to the families. So that was a lot of boxes to check. Uh, and we found Citizen and it checked all those boxes. So we were really excited. Uh, we took a gamble. It was a new company for in the newer space at the time. Uh, it grew a lot uh, since then I joined the company because I was really excited about the work and I really wanted to expand it to other rare diseases. Um, and so now we, uh, we are working with almost 60 other rare diseases in the, in the space. And we're really excited to join uh, you guys and launch it in your community. Um, so Citizen is a digital natural history study. So we build a natural history study from your medical records. And uh, so I know yesterday, you it seems like you talk a lot about the importance of data and uh, the, the big role you play as a patient in that collection of data. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick recap. I'm not going to spend too much time because it sounds like you, you, you talked a lot about that yesterday, um, but how important natural history studies are and what, what they are. So just a quick recap, um, natural history studies are important because they help understand uh, how the disease affects individuals. Uh, so they really paint a good picture of what are the symptoms, what is the burden, um, what, you know, what is the age of onset of all of the different symptoms, et cetera. So what are the medications, like everything. So this is like really painting a good picture of how is disease, disease affecting individuals. And then we also need to understand how to progress over time. Um, so that's the natural history study. And that's why usually you, you look at it over time. And that's why st standard natural history studies, which in some cases are still very important, um, it's, it's looking at it year after year after year. Um, the way Citizen is different is like we're taking all of the medical records that you have so far, and then we're building, we're collecting data from all of that. And we'll, we're, we're like, okay, we already have all that data. So we're just gonna grab all that data and paint the picture already. Uh, and then you can move forward with traditional natural history studies if you, if you have that, um, that option. Uh, it's also important to use to select and point for clinical trials. So what are we measuring? Um, how are we designing those clinical trials? And that's the more data you have and the more information you have, the faster you're going to be able to get to clinical trial and the better those clinical trials are going to be designed. And the worst thing you can do is get to uh, finally get to a treatment, finally get to uh, a clinical trial and have a poorly designed clinical trial that's going to fail. That's like the worst case scenario. So that's really important to have all of the data ahead of time uh, to get the best chance to eventually get to the treatment in the kids approved and everything. And so um, this is our, our, our goal is to accelerate uh, that time to, to treatment. And so Citizen is a, is a 
new kind of of observational study like i said it's it's there's no clinic required so uh you don't need to to fly to a specialty specialty clinic you just uh simply sign up it takes about 10 15 minutes um depending on how many providers you have to list and uh we get we collect all the medical records on your behalf and we extract the data from the medical records and i'll show you what that looks like in a minute um and then we give you back those we, we give you access to your medical records and i don't know if any of you have already tried to access those medical records on your own or go to your hospital or your, your uh, providers it, it's a pain to just get your medical your hands on your medical records it's a pain and it can be expensive uh, we do that on your behalf at no cost. And so that's the the one thing as as a patient uh, and, a, and an advocate that I feel strongly about, like all patients should have access to all their medical records in one place, uh, just because you you need it to to provide proper care and have a really good picture of what's going on with your child. Um. So anyway, we extract the data from those medical records, and 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 with that, we're able to really uh, to build a really strong natural history study in in weeks instead of years, right? Because we're collecting data from years and years and years of visits, medical visits that you've done, ex tests that you've done that you don't need to repeat, um, and um, and that really accelerates the the, the data collection. So that's that's what citizen is, uh, and I'm just gonna walk you through kind of the process. So this is this is our flow. Um, it it doesn't look like this. We have a nice platform, uh, and Jeff just signed up yesterday, and he said that was fairly easy. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad he was able to to go through uh, easily, and we've signed up thousands of of patients already. Uh, so hopefully you guys, um, when we're, I'm done with my presentation, you can go in and and start the process as well. Uh, so you'll you'll we'll give you a link. You'll just click on that link. You'll have uh, the advocacy consent, and uh, that's to share your contact information with the advocacy group so that they can reach out to you um, if you if they see that you're you're not fully finished um, onboarded, or um, if there's any potential studies in the future that they can they need to contact you for any reason. Uh, that's always good to have that advocacy consent. Then um, you will uh, will ask you to upload your driver's license and then your child's birth certificate uh, or guardianship paper. And the reason we're asking the those two uh, pieces of identity is because of legal documents is so that we can collect the medical records on your behalf. Uh, because then we go to the institutions that you have to list. So you're going to go in and list all the different institutions that you visited um, and the doctors. You don't have to go in in all the details on all the doctors. If you can, that's amazing. That's going to save us some time and we can be a little more thorough. Uh, but if you just want to list the big institutions and the specialists, that's uh, that's fine too. A lot of the records are centralized in the big institution, so we can just put in a uh, records request and ask for everything, imaging and records uh, into one institution, and they usually send everything. Um, so once we start getting the records, uh, we'll share them with you. So you own the raw medical records, and you'll start seeing them come through the portal. Uh, and that's really exciting. You get an email. Uh, I got an email from my son and I started going down that rabbit hole of going and reading the medical records. So it's more than what you usually get on your patient portal. Uh, on the patient portal, it's um, very brief summaries and you don't get the doctor's notes. We're getting all the doctor's notes. And then that, that's actually where we have a lot of data from the doc doctor's notes. And uh, it's fascinating. Uh, I've learned so much on on some of those notes. I had to have I had to Google a lot of things because there's a lot of medical terms that are like I had no idea. Um, but there's a lot of things that I realized doctors were not sharing with me, which I thought was fascinating because I thought I was, you know, they would share a lot of information with me since I was very involved in the, in my son's rare disease, and you know, I I would be one of the parent that they would feel comfortable sharing a lot of information with, but they were not. Um, so anyway, interesting. I, I learned a lot uh, from it, but um, 
it's a lot. It's a lot. It's thousands of pages. I didn't read all of it um, because we, and you can wait until we do the, the whole data extraction and we provide a full summary for you. Um, but it's just incredible information and, and uh, it's, it's really cool to see. So anyway, you have all your records, you, you start getting the records. So once we get those records, we go through triage and uh, the triage process is to make sure we have enough records to go through our gold standard because our goal is to eventually, you know, get that, that data set. Once you have a cohort, uh, enough, enough for a cohort to fill out a cohort, enough patients to fill out a cohort. And, and if there's a pharma or researcher that needs access to the data, that it meets the higher quality standard. Um, and so we cannot have gaps in those records. Um, and so if there's big gaps, like let's say you have five years without neurology notes, for example, or special, a specific specialists, we'll come back to you and say, hey, we're, we're seeing that we're missing some, some specialists. Uh, can you tell us where you've been seen, uh, et cetera? So we'll come back to you on those. And then we'll go through, so once we have enough, we'll go through the data extraction. Uh, and this is what it looks like. And this is a very basic example. Um, and it goes through machine learning first. So we have our AI that will do the first uh, round of extraction. Uh, and then we have two to three human annotators are going to go through every line of all the records and do the data extraction as well. Uh, and the goal is to standardize the, uh, to normalize the, the data, right? Because like every doctor is going to write things in a different way, uh, which is not very helpful for researchers. And uh, so the example here, if you see this doctor is describing um, generalized hypotonia, they're describing it as decreased tone throughout. throughout. So that's the one way they're they're describing it. We know that's generalized hypotonia. So we are saying that's generalized hypotonia and we're assigning the SNOMED code to it. So that's um, really standardizing the data. So um, everything is coded and, and we are looking at the data set the same way. Um, so then uh, once that's all done and all everything is extracted, we de-identify the data and we create like a beautiful sheet and I'll show you what that looks like to share with researchers and pharma companies. Um, so you get access to the raw medical records. We never share the raw medical records. They are your own uh, and includes all your personal information. Um, but we share with researchers and pharma the de-identified extracted data uh, of the cohort. So if you have 50 patients signed up, um, we'll share the data of 50 people. Um, with researchers in pharma with the identified so they can tell who is who. Um, so citizen, and, and uh, Jeff mentioned it earlier, um, the importance of data and it's one data set. So I just wanna, you know, it's not the one and only um, study, unfortunately, that you should join and you're done. Um, I would say, and that's just like, I'm not putting my citizen hat. I'm going to put my mom's hat um, of all the study that joined. That was probably the easiest uh, because it's 10, 15 minutes of my time. And that was it. Like, I, I kind of don't have to touch it unless like I go see another doctor um, and then I can ask for a new set of records to come through. But I don't have to fill out surveys. I don't have to take my my kid anywhere else to do EEGs and blood work and, and all of those. So it's, it's of all of the studies that I participate in for, for my son's rare disease, that's, that was definitely the, the, the easiest, uh, and, and had a lot of data out of it, which is really exciting. Um, but it's not the only one that is, um, needed, unfortunately. So if you look at all of the data sets, ours is from the medical records. So it's a very important piece. Um, it's, but you also need uh, your voice. So this is from your doctors in the clinician's voice. Um, and that's why you, I, I mentioned, I, I hear, I heard Jeff mentioned RAREX. This is gonna be your voice. You're, you're filling out those surveys uh, and those are very important. 
And then there's by your repository, which is going to be, you know, all of the blood sample and all this. That's also super important. Um, but we work with all the other partners to kind of figure out how to link the data so that when researchers need access to the data, it's not all everywhere. You know, it's like, how do we make sure without identifying patients, they understand that patient A is the same here. You know, the data set is here and here and here. So that's our goal with, with um, as partners in, in the space is to, to, to work together. Uh, because we understand that all of our data sets are complementing each other and they're all very important to help uh, the rare disease community work together and 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 have the and advanced research and and get closer to treatment. Um, so anyway, so that's citizens one one part, easy one. Um, so um, just 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and we'll do the link. We'll send you the link. Now, um, I, I don't think I mentioned it. It is US only right now because we're using the HIPAA right of access to collect the medical records. Uh, we're working on pilots to expand to uh, Canada and Australia, but it's not open yet. Uh, so right now, unfortunately, Citizen is only open to US patients. Um, so what are the benefits? I think I've mentioned several of those already, but uh, to recap, it's like a big big impact on research with minimum efforts on the on the family side. Uh, you get access to all your medical records in one place. And we've had countless t testimonies from families saying that in many, many ways, uh, it has helped them get second opinion faster. Um, it helped them participate in other studies, but you know, they just sent they shared because you can share those records. Uh, with anyone you want, so they can easily, um, you know, when they join other studies or needed another to see another providers, they could easily share those records. Um, some were in emergency situations in the emergency rooms, and they needed information really quickly on meds that didn't work in the past or something, and they, they didn't didn't remember, and so they were able to really quickly access their uh, citizen profile and have that uh, that information at their fingertips. So that was great also. Um, and just getting that control uh, and understanding of your loved one and, and, and the overall healthcare was uh, is very important. That's one of the feedback that we're getting from a lot of the families. That was my, um, my personal, uh, that was one big, big, um, big point for me. Um, like doctors diagnosed my son with autism without telling me uh, and I found it in the medical records uh, when they did when they did a data extraction. I was going through the the summary, which I'll show you. Um, I found like autism diagnosis, and I was just like, "Where did that come from?" <laughs> no one actually told me, you know. Um, so that was a little crazy. So it's free to join for families, uh, and there's no fee to access uh, your records. So we will collect the records at no no cost to you. Uh, and then the other thing too is that. Hospitals are required to keep the records uh, for seven to 10 years, depending. So that's something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, there's so much information in those medical records that are key to understanding the rare disease. And um, losing that information could be, uh, like hospitals don't have to keep those records. And um, so getting those records in the sooner is 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 critical so that we we're not at risk of, of of losing that that information now if your child is older than 10 uh we are usually able to get um uh, records older than 10 years old but at, after 10 uh if they're older than 10 years old it's it's not a guarantee that we can get everything um so that's just some, another thing to keep in mind all right, I'm going to show you my, I'm going to jump to my son's profile so you can see what that looks like. I'll show you also that what the data kind of looks like for researchers and I'll, I'll share the, the link. So this is the dashboard. I'm not going to click on any of the records because those are the raw records. So those are my son's actual medical records. I'm not going to share everything. Um, but each of those files has like hundreds of pages. And that, you know, they all, and then images can come through also. MRI, it all opens up uh, like the full MRI. I can read the MRI. I have no idea what I'm looking at because that's a brain MRI and I'm, 
I, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's really cool. Um, but I can share that with neurologists, like with everyone. Uh, so that's, that's really, um, that I've shared just a genetic report. Um, I've shared it so many times. I've downloaded it all the time. Everyone, I, I cannot, I, I know it's bad. I should know his mutation at the top of my head all the time, uh, being in a space, especially, but I, I, I always forget. So every time someone asks me, I, I always have to pull, I, I log on on citizen and pull up his, um, his genetic report. I actually saved it on my phone now as a contact. So it's easier, but that's another thing. Um, and then disease summary. So that's once the data is extracted, we provide a disease summary and it's everything we found. And then we, we organize it in, in chronological order. So that's helpful to, um, if you fill out surveys, I know I gut check myself, uh, cause I can't rely on my memory cause there's just so much happening all the time. And so I just go back and, uh, and then just double check, make sure that I'm right. Uh, when I'm filling out my the survey, especially on meds and things like this, it's just always helpful. Um, but there are things that, you know, there's like, I know for my sons, for example, I titrate slower than what the doctor prescribed to, to him, like, especially on epidiolics and things like this. So like the dosage is going to be a little different what I give versus what's in the medical records and things like this. So uh, that's where the patient reported outcome is, is important too. So the combination of both is, is super important. So that's the summary that you would have access to that you can also share. And then uh, finally, this is the, this is a sample data set of uh, data extraction. Um, this is de-identified. This is with three patients. Uh, so we have demographic, primary diagnosis. So that's, that's going to researchers and pharma companies. Uh, genetic findings. And then clinical diagnosis. So again, just three patients. Look at the amount of data that we get. So you can already start seeing how amazing of a picture we can paint of the disease. Like you can already start saying, okay, when do we, uh, what are the most common symptoms that are associated with the disorder? When do they start, uh, et cetera. Seizure history, growth, diagnostic procedures. Uh, that's helpful if we need, ever need to collect EEGs or if we need to look at EEG reports, that kind of thing. Uh, so we do exam finding, standardized assessment, medication, uh, side effects, hospital procedures, uh, hospital admissions, et cetera. So we have a huge data set. And again, that's just three patients. Um, with Singap, we have 191. A lot of cohorts uh, have start at 50. So 50 is already a really good, you would get a really nice picture. Um, I don't know what, do you, do you remember your, your goal, Jeff? I'm sorry to run chat, like I'm just jumping. Is it? No, 50? I think you had set up, uh, you had thrown down a number that Mike uh, Graglia and Syngap did in their first 48 hours. And I want to say um, it was a pretty significant number. And so we said uh, it would be great to have 50 uh, this week, but I, I think we could have 100 um, and we can talk a little bit more about how easy this is. And it's, and, and uh, I'll, I'll share how to, how to join. Um, but so, yes, so Syngap, we joined, um, we signed up when we launched, we signed up 50 patients in 48 hours. Um, we like to brag about it. Uh, SCNA day, they signed up 80 patients in six hours. They like to brag about it. We joke around about it, but it's important because it sends signals to researchers and pharma that your community is engaged and will show up when they need it. And that's that's something that they will look at um, when they're looking at, you know, is, is this community a community that we can work with? Uh, if we need to recruit for clinical trial, if we need to recruit for this and this and this, is this a community a community we can count on, or are we going to challenge? Are we going to have a challenge recruiting? 
Um, we hear all the time, a lot of, you know, several clinical trials are shutting down because they can't recruit. Uh, and so showing that you are, you can sign, you can spend 10 minutes and join, you know, that's, that's a good signal. Like we're here, we're ready. We understand how important that is. Um, that's, that's in the strong signal that your, your community is, 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 uh, serious about it. So just, uh, just putting it out there. <laughs> uh, so to join, what do you need to do? Um, click on that link and Jeff, I don't know if you can put it in the chat. Um, that's, uh, or if you have, or if you're going to share it in another way, uh, it's best to have your driver's license and the birth certificate and guardianship paper ready. And then the list of institution. You don't have to have every all the institutions ready. Have at least one or two. Uh, you can always come back later and add more. Um, but have at least your driver's license and your child's birth certificate ready. That's that would be ideal to to finish the process. And we can come and then you can come back and add more more institutions later. And that's all I got today. All right, I'm adding the link. Uh, when I originally added it into the chat, it cut off the last little bit. Also, let's try that. Um, okay, so quite a bit to unpack here. Um, I think first of all, uh, just you know the the end thing. I don't know if anybody has seen the movie Horton Hears a Who. Uh, it was a big movie in our household with the kids, but I imagine us as this community that is just trying to say, here we are listen to us right this is what we need i mean the, the the scenario where you can get to a clinical trial to help your loved one your child whatever the case may be but you can't have the participation is i would be heartbroken i, I can't even fathom that um given the amount of families that i talk to and and understanding the needs of the community um yeah. Oh, I, 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 it would make me emotional. I'm not going to cry on on the first presentation of the day. Uh, so um, it's it, it's unreal. But I think I think th there's there's some questions um, that have come through, and I think a couple of them are similar. Um, and you, you referenced the hospitals being able to keep medical records or required to keep them for seven to ten years. And so there's a couple of uh, military families here um, who have questioned um whether you know how far back uh is potential or if there is paper copies and not electronic uh digital copies how could those be submitted would they scan them in is, is there the function for that yeah so if um list still list the facilities and we will we'll try to go get them um if they come back and they don't have them but you do have the paper copies you can um you can reach out to us and either scan them yourself and upload them. There's an upload uh, feature on on the on the portal. Um, if it's a lot, like if you have boxes or a huge binder, and you're comfortable sending that to us, we will scan it for you, upload it, and then uh, ship that back to you. And we'll we arrange the the shipping back and forth. So we've done that for wow. several. Yeah. Um. There's another um, really good question in here um, from Grace. Uh, so the number of KS families signed up so far is probably one. Uh, it's probably me. <laughs> we just uh, we're we're using today as kind of the launch point and have kept it under wraps. And um, I'm going to get our social media team, uh, which uh, me uh, to, to post about it later, just to make it accessible uh, for any members um, of our community that haven't been able to attend this morning for various reasons. Uh, but you know, as we discussed. You know, 50 is for me, like the, the floor, like that, that is where we have to be, um, where we need to be is, you know, you referenced, uh, um, you know, the patients in the U S uh, Canada and Australia are, uh, going to be following closely thereafter, or at some point, uh, I will say that in our worldwide map, we have almost 250 patients, uh, and, and families who have registered in our worldwide map. So it's reasonable to believe 
that we could have a similar number uh, sign up for Citizen. It's it's that easy. The worldwide map takes five minutes. Citizen takes 15. I, I literally timed myself um, and I had my daughter's birth certificate. I had my license. Um, and then, you know, we have done a similar effort previously that I want to touch on and just be very transparent about where we, we partnered with all stripes. Um, I want to be transparent with everybody in the community about uh, how this um, complements what the, what the, what the, the reason for change is um, and what our vision is in partnering with Citizen. So um, again, I, I think that this is not a big lift and I think it has incredible value, not only to patient families, but again, to the research community. So, um, you know, I don't know that there's a lot of barriers. It's just um, about the commitment to just literally sit down. So let's just touch real quickly on uh, the, the change from all stripes to citizen is essentially what this amounts to. Um, for context, early on, uh, when we first launched in 2020, we looked at um, citizen, we looked at hordes, we looked at all stripes. And at the time, uh, Citizen was actually just starting out this program. Nasha Fitter, um, who has led the effort for Citizen uh, since I've uh, come into this space, uh, had just started out the neurodevelopmental uh, program within Citizen, and it had five conditions at the time. Um, and at that time, patient advocacy organizations were being charged, uh, I think it was $300 to $350 uh, per submission. Yep. And so when we first launched as an organization, we wanted our funds uh, to be pooled and directed towards the build out of the Cleaster Clinic. And so we were just very cognizant of spending money and, and looking at other uh, potential platforms that were available. And so at that time, All Stripes was free. Over the course of time, things have changed. Uh, there's been a, you know, these, you're seeing a lot of, of platforms um, start up and then um, kind of fizzle out because it's kind of a complicated process um and you know there is there is value in the data but it also takes uh a lot of work to extract the data and what i find valuable and always have found valuable about citizen itself is that it leverages machine learning and ai to extract it it's not a manual process and that is a big differentiator from the other platforms out there and so we want to make sure that this data is pulled through that way I think I said it earlier today, just about kind of the sense of urgency around getting this this information, pulling through it. And, you know, when you see questions in the chat about 27 years of information, imagine calling through that manually. And we've seen that as a choke point in getting data and, and kind of understanding how this data can then be transferred to researchers. If you're going through this manually line by line, it's an incredible effort. And so leveraging the tools available through AI and machine learning is what Citizen brings to the table. I would also say that Rare X, so uh, Virginia, you hit on this, is Rare X is the more what they call PRO or patient reported outcome surveys, where uh, patient families are going through the surveys, contributing to the data set. Uh, and then we have always said that, you know, to have the deepest, richest data set to be able to provide to clinicians and researchers, you need both sides of this. You need the medical records and you needed the patient reported outcomes. As, as anybody who's in the Cleaster Syndrome community can attest to, if you go in the, the closed 9Q deletions page, the amount of information within that page is incredibly rich and deep. That's where just by default, because of the lack of these opportunities that have existed historically, that's where families have been kind of uh, conditioned to go. And again, I, I can name you know several folks that I see. I see Be Becky Libby here in the audience like, Becky has the incredible amount of knowledge, and I always see her chiming in, right? And so the idea, though, is to, to make this information more accessible so that it's not just dependent upon us as a community to hold this information, to inform the medical community. And the only way this is going to be done is through collaboration. And so RareX and Citizen have a partnership. So when we look at the space, the field, we have always talked about how we prioritize collaboration and RareX and Citizen have that collaboration where that data set can be fused together. So that's incredibly important to us. Um, and so that's another uh, big, big decision in why we're doing this. Um, and I think the last thing is just the ability to scale. Um, as our community grows, we have 
I think we, we were discussing this morning, I think we're close closing in on 700 folks in our worldwide map. But with our prevalence of one in 25,000 to 35,000 that we've, uh, that we've uh, talked about several times, the need for this opportunity to scale is only going to become uh, you know, more intensive. And so we feel like this partnership is the way to go. We, we, I, I know this partnership is the way to go. So, um, yeah, so for those reasons, uh, we're we're doing this. So I think we're up to 124 folks that are in RareX. Again, RareX, um, they're consistently coming out with new surveys, right? So there's there's reason to continuously go back in there. Virginia, maybe you can clarify this for me. But once you're in all, uh, once you're in Citizen, then they pull the medical records. But from that point forward, it's automatic. Is, is there any other need for the patient family to come back into Citizen other than just for their own knowledge to see what new information might be in there? Just to let them let us know that we need to refresh the record. So like once a year, once every six months, but it's like literally one button to press to request new records. That's it. Okay. And that's um, usually the the community like as a whole. Like you would send a, note, a reminder to everyone. It's like, hey, it's time to log back in and ask for a record refresh. That's how we do it with Sync app. We'll just send a note and say, hey, reminder, everyone. Did you go see a neurologist? Did you see a specialist? Time to just go and request. And can you can you highlight some of the other organizations? I mean, we, we've talked about. Simgap, uh being in the citizen platform. I know Rett syndrome is in the in the yep. platform. Um, Fox V1 syndrome. Are there are there other ones that I'm that I'm leaving out? Let me see. Uh, I'm sharing. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to figure out my share screen. Where my share went? Uh, we have sixty organizations. So we have uh, SLC six A one. Um, we have. Um, uh, STXBP1, we have um, we have so many. <laughs> so yeah, well, sorry. I mean, I, I think even even those two. Um, I mean, KCNT1, uh, STXBP1. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's uh, that's Charlene Sun Rigby. So so right. STXBP1, just for everybody's knowledge, Charlene Rigby um, was the uh, CEO of uh, Rare X. Uh, Global Genes has since partnered with RareX. Uh, I believe everyone should be familiar with Global Genes. They're one of the world uh, leading organizations as far as rare, rare diseases go. Um, and Carlene is now the CEO of Global Genes. And so it's, you know, there's benefits from affiliation. I think Eric alluded to this yesterday is, is as we're creating this kind of, uh, I, I keep using this word because it's so relevant, this this ecosystem and this, this rare disease community uh, on a larger scale, it helps inform and benefit each other. It's it's the rising tide lifts all boats um, mentality. And so when these kind of prominent organizations that are making significant headway in, in their efforts uh, are partnering, I think that's a really good sign. I also think it's a really good sign when, you know, Virginia referenced, she's a rare disease mom, right? Um, Nasha, who's with Citizen, is a rare disease mom. Jason, who I met early on in his diagnostic journey, um, had recently joined uh, Citizen. He's a rare disease dad, right? Uh, so when you see rare disease parents who have now made it their career um, to invest in the rare disease community, um, they're partnering with um, certain organizations. I think it's, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire kind of thing. Like that's where you want to be involved in. So uh, I, I personally am, am super excited. Again, the link's right here. I, I timed it. It took me 15 minutes. Um, and I, I, I had the birth certificate. I had my driver's license handy. And I, I pulled um, my my All Stripes um, uh, account up. And then I was able to simply enter in the facilities. Because there's a section when you go into Citizen that says, you know, name your facilities. So I just looked at the screen to my left. Uh, and entered it in. And so it made it uh, super streamlined for me. So uh, I don't see uh, any other questions here. Um, I do see a question about uh, New Zealand. Um, I don't know if, if New Zealand would be part of the, the Australian effort or not. Um, can you speak to that real quickly? 
I don't know yet. It's we're working on those details. Um, so we'll know in the next few weeks. And then um, now if you do have some of the records, um, we might be able to let you upload them in the next couple of weeks. So just stay tuned. Okay. And how soon, if we could get after this today and, and pursue it pretty aggressively, how, um, how much visibility do we have into how quickly our patient uh, signups are going? Oh, you'll get uh how how you get how you know the as soon as you start getting the you'll get a dashboard I can share a dashboard with you tonight, uh, okay. so you'll have live access to see how numbers are coming through. Wonderful. Yep. Well, as, long as, for... as long as patient as long as families are doing the advocacy consent. Okay. Because that way you can see who is signing up. Okay. Fair enough. You don't have access to the data. You don't see the data, but you see the, the names and their status. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you uh, for your Thanks time, for your me. energy, uh, and looking forward to this partnership. Same. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Bye.